Hello everyone, my name is Kuvina, and welcome to part 1 of my series on relativity. There will be a total of around 10 videos, and I will upload them one by one as I make them. Once the series is complete, I will also compile every section into a single video. With that out of the way, let's get into part 1, which is about reference frames and the postulates of relativity. To put it simply, Relativity is the idea that time and space behave differently depending on your perspective. It has many consequences, including length contraction and time dilation. It was famously worked on by Albert Einstein, who is basically the smartest person of all time, at least in public perception. Because of this, you might be thinking you could never possibly understand relativity, but that's not the case. I believe anyone has the potential to understand relativity, it's just a matter of having a good explanation. There are plenty of good explanations out there, but in this series, I will be explaining what worked for me in a way that I think everyone can understand. So with that, let's get into it. In order to understand relativity, you first have to understand the concept of reference frames. A reference frame is essentially just a perspective. If an observer is standing still, then their perspective is a reference frame. If an observer is running past, then their perspective is also a reference frame. If an observer is slowing down, then their perspective is a third reference frame. An inertial reference frame is just a reference frame that isn't accelerating. In this example, A and B are inertial reference frames because they're each maintaining a constant velocity. C is not an inertial reference frame though, it's slowing down, which is a form of acceleration. Now I've been talking about relativity, but there are actually two different kinds of relativity. General relativity and special relativity. You might think special is harder, but actually the special in the name refers to the fact that it's only one subset of general relativity. Specifically, special relativity only deals with inertial reference frames, while general relativity deals with all reference frames, even accelerating ones. This series will mainly be about special relativity, but there might be some stuff about general relativity near the end. And now onto the postulates. A postulate basically means a fundamental rule, and special relativity has two of them. Number one. The laws of physics are the same in any inertial reference frame. We already have an intuitive sense of this, which can be seen in the example. If you toss an object in the air, then it will land right back in your hand where it started. If you do that again, but traveling at a constant speed, it will still land right back in your hand in the same place. Of course, from the ground's perspective, it looks like it's moved. But from your perspective, it looks like the ground has moved. When it comes to relativity, both of these interpretations are equally valid. Something interesting happens in reference frame C, though. In a vehicle that's slowing down, the object will get flung forward. This is different than the other two cases, and that's because this isn't an inertial reference frame. The fact that this reference frame is accelerating makes it fundamentally different than the other two, and so the laws of physics are no longer the same. Now you might be thinking, from this reference frame, it looks like the others are accelerating, so why isn't that the correct interpretation? Well, although velocity is relative, acceleration isn't. The reasoning for this is a whole other complicated story involving a bucket of water and rotating the universe around it. But for now, all you need to know is that velocity is relative, but acceleration is not. So that's the first postulate, and so far everything seems normal. But the second postulate is where it gets really interesting. It states that the speed of light is the same in any inertial reference frame. Specifically, it's 299,792,458 meters per second, and we use the letter C to refer to this value. Unlike the first postulate, this one goes completely against all intuition. Let's say you have someone who throws projectiles at 20 meters per second. If you put them on a platform moving 10 meters per second, then the 20 meters per second of the projectile from their perspective will get added to the 10 meters per second of the platform from your perspective. Therefore, from your perspective, it looks like the projectile is moving at 30 meters per second. This makes sense, 
But now, let's say you replace the projectile throwing person with a lantern. Instead of throwing projectiles, it casts light, which comes in the form of particles called photons, and they travel at the speed of light, or c. From the lantern's perspective, the photons move at speed c. Therefore, you would expect to see them move at speed c plus 10. But no, even from your perspective, they still move at speed c. This fact seems ridiculous, but there's plenty of experimental evidence to back it up. A question you might have right now is, why is this a thing? Unfortunately, there's no good answer. It's just a fact of the universe, just like how the universe is three-dimensional. Asking why in this case is less about physics and more of a philosophical pondering about existence as a whole. Another question you might have is how is this possible? It seems like it breaks the entirety of classical physics. Does this mean that classical physics is wrong? Well, it's not exactly wrong, more so just incomplete, where relativity is the missing piece of the puzzle. As it turns out, it's completely possible to construct an internally consistent theory of physics that incorporates these postulates. It just leads to a few side effects. The two most important are time dilation and length contraction, but there's also relativistic addition of velocity, relativity of simultaneity, mass energy equivalence, and a lot more. These side effects seem crazy, but they really do happen in real life, and it's possible to compute formulas for them with nothing but the postulates and some basic math. If you want to know how that's done, then I hope you'll join me for the rest of this series, because part two will be about time dilation. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, because I'm trying to grow my channel and those are extremely helpful. Also, if you have suggestions or feedback, then tell me in the comment section. I appreciate all comments. So with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!